Hello YouTube, this is John Erickson with a video about our casing rotators that we manufacture and install on SRAM rigs. We typically use the CR12 or the CR16 on the SRAM. There are a few ways to install these drives and when we go over a couple of these ways. If you have an existing mud pump circuit on your drill, you can use that pump and dedicate it just for the lower drive. Or you can use the fast feed circuit on the upper head and put an electric diverter in, which I show you pictures coming up. When adding that casing rotator and traveling down the road, it doesn't raise your height over 13 foot 6 and it increases your weight by about 2500 pounds unless you take the mud pump off. There's a single cylinder as you see in the picture that crowds this drive up and down or you can use dual cylinders. In this video I have everything running both rotaries and both crowd systems. There's plenty of oil to do both. This is a SRAM model 450. Lower drive all the way to the bottom. Carousel clearance to come in. This will be when you change a drill rod. Goes plenty far enough through the table. Now to switch from lower drive to fast speed, you hit that toggle switch right there and fast speed head goes up. Works excellent. In this picture you'll see the looped pipes. Uh, the installation takes four of those. Uh, they can be added or you can make them yourselves. It makes it, the installation much easier. And there's also a black canister right above those pipes that's the expansion tank for the planetary gearbox. This is the planetary gearbox adapter. Planetary gearbox. Hydraulic motor adapter. And piston hydraulic motor. This is a side view showing those two pipes again and the oil tank for oil expansion in the planetary drive. The planetary drive stays full all the time of synthetic 90 weight oil. In this picture halfway up the tower, maybe not even halfway up, you'll see the second two sets of hydraulic tubes. They're 1 inch ID, they're 5000 PSI tubes with number 16 JIC male on each. There are two bulkheads like this one about a third of the way up the tower as you see and the other bulkhead is right affixed to the drive at the bottom. Here's a picture side by side of the four pipes. The red ones are on the drive, the white ones are attached to the mast. And again number 16 male JIC pipes. This is the stock bulkhead that comes with your SRAM for the upper hydraulic hoses for the upper head. As you can see, it's a it's actually a pretty nice mounting unit. In this picture, you'll see a bottom view of the lock system, and in this particular case, it has 10-inch jaws in it. There are three bigger bolts in the bottom drive to remove the jaws, as you can see in the picture. This is a top view showing the hydraulic cylinder hooked to the top of the brackets, the braces that run the drive up and down the mast. In this picture the, the drive is all the way to the top, 11 foot of stroke and you also see the breakout tabs right on top of the drive there. This picture you'll see how the crowd cylinder attaches to the top brackets of the drive with a single inch and a half bolt. The drive is all the way down. This is the top mounting plate. It's welded in both sides. There's two side plates. You can see the one on the left. You can't see the one on the right. You 
weld them in first and then put your top bar across and weld that in and I'll give you the dimensions of where to put that top bar these are rings that ring around the existing cross members in the tower to keep the strength I believe it's just standard six inch pipe there's probably five of them in the tower they're easy to install as far as lowering the tower down when you're done the drive wants to be all the way at the bottom hoses everything clears very simple here's an electric diverter valve that diverts the oil from fast top head feed to lower rotary drive you're never running the lower rotary drive at the same time you're tripping out of the hole so it works very good it's number 16 JIC uh, 24 volt this is a hydraulic cylinder used in the lock and unlock system on all the drives. The smaller drives take a 2 inch bore by 2 inch stroke and the larger drives take a 2 inch bore by 3 inch stroke. In this picture you'll see two pressure relief valves. The one on the left is a cast iron 3 port. It has an in and out with a pressure relief adjustable at the bottom. The one on the right is an aluminum pressure relief valve. The valve on the right is used in conjunction with a electric two-way valve put in the lockup line on the lower drive to limit the lockup torque when locking the jaws on the pipe. It has a toggle switch on the dash and when you're done locking the jaws up you flip the toggle and that puts it back up to 3500 psi. This valve is easily installed in the lockup line side of the lower drive with a number 16 JICT going to the electric diverter valve and from there it goes to this aluminum pressure relief valve on the right side. This is a six port cast iron valve number 16 SAE ports used to divert the oil from fast feed to lower rotation it enables you to run the 450 without adding a pump this is your selector valve 6 port to change from jacks to lock in or from jacks to lower feed up and down it has a manual override in the black in the back you'll see it on the big black knob it's 24 volt this is a two port electric valve that is normally open to pressure relief. In order to get full torque on the torque side you need to energize it with 24 volt and it also has a manual override which is a big black button. This is a standard SRAM spool valve that's hooked to a smart pump variable volume depending on the pressure. It's pressure compensated. The lower valve in this picture is the fast feed for the top head and that's what I get the oil off of for the lower drive. This lever previously was used for the lower slide wrench and is now the crowd up and down on the lower drive with a pressure gauge above it. This valve cranked out will let the lower drive float down without any down pressure. You have to clockwise turn it in to raise the drive. This lever has a toggle switch attached to it. It either unlocks and locks the jaws on the drive or it works the hydraulic cylinder on the breakout wrench. This lever pilot operates a major spool valve that either runs the lower rotation forward and backward or when you turn the toggle switch down it is your fast feed on your upper head for tripping out of the hole.
this is a bottom view of the drive all the way down actually it's probably eight inches from being bottomed out in two places on the tower you have to notch out the horizontal plates that you can see in the picture to clear the rails this is a close-up view up the tower of the cylinder totally collapsed and the drive is up in the air about 14-15 feet. These are the brass wear guides. There's eight wide ones and four narrow ones to clear the back of the tower. They come with tapered brass bolts. These are tool steel grade grips that go in the jaws to grip the pipe. The one on the left is two inch, then three inch, then four inch. You must keep them clean in order to grip the pipe. Even remove the tar off the pipe or any other kind of mud. This is the stop for the lower carousel coming in. Make sure when you have the carousel in you're changing a rod that you do not lift the lower drive. As you can see in the picture you'll break that adjustable ear right off. It's an adjustable stop. This is a side view of the tower extension that you have to fabricate and weld on to extend the rails down below the bottom of the 450 tower in order to get your table down low enough to work it as a normal table. We have the prints on this lower tower extension. We will send them to you if you like to fabricate it or we can fabricate that extension in our shop. It's up to you. And there's another picture showing that lower tower extension double plate right below the chain sprocket the first plate on top is stock SRAM the second plate is part of what you weld on these are pipe adapters for diverters either a 10 inch that we make or a 16 this is a 16 inch diverter that we make with double ball bearings this is a 10 by 8 adapter. And that's it for the installation video. If you have any questions, you can always contact me or my office. And thank you for watching.